A man armed with a crossbow has been shot dead by police in South London in the early hours of this morning. Joining me right now from Southwark, uh, where this happened, is Talk TV correspondent Nick Ellaby. Uh, Nick, tell us where you are, tell us what happened, what do we know so far? Good afternoon, Julia. Shocking incident, really. I I'm now standing on the entrance to Bywater Place, which is a, a close in the London borough of Southwark, so we're south-east London. We're actually just over the river from Canary Wharf. And I'm here because this morning, at around 5 a.m., the Met Police shot and killed a man they say was armed with a crossbow and trying to get in to this property you can see behind me. All we have so far is the Met Police's version of events and, and a couple of people I've spoken to nearby. So the Met Police say that uh, they were called just before 5 a.m. this morning to an incident here in Bywater Place in South East London to reports of a man armed with a crossbow and other weapons trying to gain entry to a property here. And then we understand that that man then threatened local officers working here in Southwark. An armed police then took over. Uh, the man armed with a crossbow apparently gained entry into one of these properties and then he was shot by an armed officer. He was treated immediately at the scene. There were already ambulance crews on hand. An air rescue team had already been dispatched as well. But sadly, he lost his life here at the scene. Two people inside the property, occupants, were also treated for minor injuries, and they're said to be OK. I've spoken to a number of people here who live nearby. One guy who uh, runs a kind of neighbourhood watch group uh, here at Russia, Wood Dock Woodlands, uh, saying that he got calls from dog walkers this morning to a disturbance. He said he was very shocked. There's actually five primary schools on this little peninsula just south of the Thames. It's a very, lots of families, lots of young people here. Everyone I'm, I've spoken to so far kind of shocked and surprised about what's happened. And then I also spoke to another uh, young lady called Jess who lives just a few doors down and she said she woke up when the police car and the sirens were on outside and then she heard what she thought were banging noises. And that's all she could relay. But she, again, very, very shocked and surprised to hear what's happened. Uh, this comes uh, just, uh, well, we had incidents like this are, are very rare. I mean, we've had a, a quote from Detective Chief Superintendent Seb Ajay Addo, who's responsible for policing in this borough. He says his thoughts are with all those affected by this incident. He understands the local community will be concerned. Uh, he's supporting the IOPC investigation. That's the Independent Office of Police Conduct. I've already seen a guy here with an IOPC jacket on. These incidents are referred to the IOPC as a matter of course, Julia, as I'm sure you're aware. And he also says armed officers are highly trained, patrolling the streets, dealing with challenging, fast-moving and often dangerous situations, and they have to try and protect the public and their unarmed colleagues. He also points to the fact that these instances are very rare. One man was killed in London last year and another man in 2022. That was Chris Caber, an unarmed officer. A police officer has been charged with murder over that. Should be named this month. But as I say, this incident referred to the IOPC just as a matter of course. And, and everyone around here very shocked after what's happened, Julia. Well, indeed. And again, I, you say sort of sadly, I've got to be honest with you, I'm a big fan of police shooting dead people with crossbows trying to break into people's homes. I'm thinking, well done, police officers. Very brave of them. And as you say, this is a very rare incident. Police officers, I believe, on called on average to something like 25, 26,000 incidents a year across the country. And on average, they open fire, you know, a handful of times. And it is quite routine for there to be one, two, three, four, five, max, you know, killed in any year. There's no doubt at all our police are not trigger happy. But as you say, in any case where shots are fired, particularly in a, a fatal shooting like this, um, there will be an in independent investigation. But really appreciate you joining us uh, for telling us uh, what's going on at the scene. Uh, that is our reporter uh, there, Nick Ellaby, talk TV correspondent there at the scene in Southwark, actually not too far from where we are right now. Um, former Met Police Detective Chief Inspector Mike Neville also joins us on the line to talk about this. And indeed that, that Chris Cabber case as well, which goes to court. Um, uh, Mike, thank you very much for joining us. Um, a very, very scary incident um, uh, for, for those in, in the house, in the neighbours, but also, I think, for the police as well. They, they say in earlier statements they were threatened. They called in the armed police response unit who came. This man, by all accounts, had broken, managed to get into, gain access to this home, armed with a crossbow. It's believed he had other weapons as well. He was shot dead by the police. The trouble with this is, of course, you know, there's always an investigation, as there should be. We should take these incidents seriously. But for the police officers involved, this can be very, very difficult for them, can't they? They're taken off duty. 
Um, they face often years of investigation and sometimes, and we won't go into the, the details of the Chris Capper case, they can face prosecution. Yes, and we ask a lot of people, don't we? We ask a lot of human beings to make split-second decisions. And then, as we see in the Carver case, I think it's outrageous that an officer has been charged with murder, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, but can we, can we not... Take... That case is, that yeah, case is obviously a live so, case, so, so we're not going to talk about the ins and outs of that case, okay. if you will. So, with, the, with, the, with, with all firearms officers in general, I think anybody making a decision, any jury or any lawyers making decisions, should be taken to one of these firearms uh, ranges where targets pop up and you literally have to make an instant decision, is this person going to kill others or me? Uh, and that would might uh, change the mind of lawyers who pour over things for uh, six months when an officer's had less than a sixth of a second to make a decision. Now, with this case, with the crossbow, I had some uh, personal dealings with, the, uh, uh, with one of my staff helping the police with the Ilford uh, crossbow murder which occurred in in 2019 there a, a pregnant woman was murdered by a, a, an ex-husband with a crossbow so these these actual weapons are absolutely uh, deadly uh, and so the officers were right to uh, call their armed colleagues and i just i do like you i feel sorry for the, whichever officer has to make that dreadful decision and pull that trigger uh, because they're no face with three, four, five years possibly of their life in suspended animation where somebody has got to um, make a decision. And we, like, for example, we ask surgeons to operate on brains and hearts yeah. and we accept that occasionally these people will make a small mistake and they'll nick an artery or something and people will die. But we accept that these surgeons are, are very skilled people, but they're humans and things when you're in a dangerous yeah. situation, bad things. And can they're happen. doing they're doing um, their best. I, honestly, I, I'd doing like I'd like to shake the hand of the officer who did this. He's he probably saved lives. I mean, what, what, where the hell do you buy a crossbow from, by the way? Well, you can get them. For, there's all sorts of uh, hunting shops. It's a a strange uh, weapon. As far there's all sorts of obscure legislation that anybody doing their police inspector's exam could probably tell you. Um, uh, the, the the rules and regulations. The facts are uh, that it's a bad thing to be carrying around yeah. uh, the streets of London, and particularly if you're trying to break into a house, so it becomes an, an aggravated burglary because you're trying to enter the house armed with a, a weapon. Uh, and and so, uh, well done to the officers for what they've done. Uh, let's hope that, that the occupants are, are well, uh, and, and the officers, uh, are, are, no one's, been, no one else has been injured. But I, I just feel for officers who have to mm. make split second decisions, and then have lawyers yeah. spending six years uh, yes. judging them. Exactly, and and we know because of the figures tell us that the police officers are not trigger happy. If they were trigger happy, you have twenty six thousand instances where armed officers are called to the scene. They may just be sitting in the van, but twenty six thousand instances on average they come to the scene. Um, because the police feel that you know, there might be a situation they need to be involved in, and on only a handful, literally, I don't mean like a few hundred, I mean a handful of occasions are weapons actually fired. One, two, sometimes, some years, nobody gets shot at by police. The, our police are not trigger-happy.